All right, what's up guys? So somebody asked me how to swarm kite on a bard and I have a lot of experience. So uh, this is gonna be a quick guide on how to swarm kite and everything you need to know. It's like 2 a.m. so I'm super tired. So that's why I sound like I do, but let's uh, go through this. So the first thing you wanna do when you swarm kite is hide all the corpses. You can type hide corpse all. The reason why you wanna do this is because when your train starts dying or if there's any corpses, if you accidentally loot it, it'll, it can get you killed. Um, and it's happened to me a few times in my other bard. When you're ready to show them all again, just type hide corpse and none. And it's really good to duo with a partner or just duo when you're swarm kiting. That way they can loot everything before it rots and then you can split the loot or whatever. Um, but so let's go ahead and hide all these. Next thing you want to do is set up your keybinds. Uh, besides this right here, I usually put the window right where wherever you keep your mouse. Like I normally keep my mouse over here, so it's really convenient for me to have it right here. This is like so you can switch instruments and um, you know, equip your weapon and stuff like that because you're gonna want to switch instruments while you're kiting You don't have to but it's gonna make the kite go a lot faster Because your dots are gonna do way more damage with the right instrument and it's not that hard to do and I'll show you how to do it. So Then you want to set up your key binds so press alt O you can use whatever binds you want But I suggest just copying mine. You need something bound to auto run so like shift tab or Q or something and then A and D, and then you need to bind Shift A and Shift D to strafe left and right. This is so that you can hold down, so that you can free up your mouse, switch instruments. If you don't bind that, and you're just using A and W, when you let go of the mouse, it's gonna turn, and you won't be able to do it. So that's the purpose of that bind. And then you wanna set up your camera. So I have it bound to C for first person, and then Shift C is this camera where it like zooms in. Sometimes it'll bug out, and it'll just switch itself without switching the bind it'll change itself to this one where it looks like this. You can use that if you want, but if it does that, then all you gotta do is just flip it to the other one and uh, it'll be back to normal. And then as far as your spell gems, um, these I use these binds for other characters, so that's why I have it like this, but for a bard, the most important thing is that if you're kiting in this direction, like this, then you just want to have at least have all of your dots bound to something that you can hit with your index finger because if you have like let's say your dot is bound to q and you're kiting like this it's very hard to hit q while you're holding down a or like the number one key or something so that's why you want to bound to like e or r like my dot is bound to e and then my next one would be bound to r and then f so that way it's really easy if you kite in the other direction you know then you can bind it to q or one or something like that so um that's pretty much it for binds, and here's how you do the actual kite. When you're pulling mobs, you can pull any mobs except for giants because their hitbox is too big and they're impossible to swarm kite. Uh, you don't want to pull cats or rhinos and kunark or uh, wolves because they run faster um, because you're not going to use silos while you're kiting. You can use silos, but it's actually much harder because it's harder to like get the perfect radius when you're using silos. So. Um, otherwise, you can pull anything. You can pull snakes and beetles and whatnot. Now, when you're actually pulling, you can use shurikens, but they have a really close range, so I don't really like shurikens. You can run up to the mobs and hit them, which I also don't recommend because they can stun you. Plus, you'll be taking a lot of damage at higher levels, and you know, you'll know you have to twist your heal and whatnot. So my favorite way to pull is just to use chance. This character is only level 6, so I don't have a chant yet, and I only have one dot. So for the sake of this guide, I'm going to be twisting two songs, so just act like this is my dot. You know, and I actually show you... Um, but, uh, and I also don't have my chant, but the chant is my favorite way to pull because then you can just sit at range, you just target one, you chant it, and then you just target the other one, you know, hit your, your single target chant. That's like my favorite. So uh, we'll just grab a couple more mobs here. I'm gonna get hit by these right now because just to speed this up a little bit so I can pull these a little bit faster. Put my silos back on. And while you're actually kiting, there's two ways to move your mouse. So one way is by moving it kind of smooth. When you move your mouse smooth like this, well, then the mobs are gonna catch up to you the quickest, and I'll show you in a minute. The other way to move your mouse is to flick it. The benefit of flicking is if you need to like avoid something, like let's say this is a KOS mob, and I'm like, oh crap, it's in my way. You just flick your mouse. You don't wanna flick it too far, of course, because then it'll catch up and I'll show you, but if you just really need to do like a quick turn, that's what you wanna do. And then you can, you can also jump to get away from it. So let me just show you what that looks like. So once you get your train here, then you just want to run around in circles and just kind of get them all rounded up and nice and condensed. You know, if you had a lot more mobs, they'd be more condensed. There we go. And once you do that, you press C to switch to your first person. Then you want to press Shift A so that way you're, you're auto strafing like this. Then you're ready to twist. Um, 
turn off your song, click off silos, and just take your time and you can cast your first dot a couple times. You want to take your instrument, let's say this is like the right instrument for it, even though it's not. Uh, well, it might be for this song, I forget, but yeah, strings. So what you want to do is you start casting it, equip the instrument, and then you want to start getting in range. So you see how it winced? I was already in range. For some reason, these lower level mobs seem to run a little bit faster. The higher level mobs, they won't quite catch catch up to you as fast. Uh, maybe, I, I really don't know why that is, but these just seem to catch up to me much quicker than higher level mobs. And you want to be careful about the mobs that you run past. Like if you're twisting your dot like this and you're running past a mob and it aggroes like that, it could potentially stun you and get you killed because your train will catch up. If you're running past like a KOS mob and it hits you, you just need, it's just something to be careful of. So what you want to do when you're ready to twist is... I like to cast it and then I kind of ease in so that way I'm, I'm moving the mouse and easing towards the end like right when it goes off. See how it's like right there? And you just want to be careful and make sure you don't get hit. It, like if you miss it a couple times, that's perfectly fine. The most important thing is just not to get hit because if you get hit and die, it's going to take way longer than if you miss a couple dots. So you cast your first dot, you want to ease into it like this, make sure it hits, get that sweet spot, you can see them wince. Then you start casting your second one, equip the right instrument, ease into it. Boom. And you just you just do that over and over with any of the dots that you have. Like you, you'll have like three three to four dots, you know. Aoe. Uh, if I remember correctly, I forget which ones, but there's like two songs that have a little bit longer range, and then there's one song. I'm pretty sure it's this one, the dissonance, where you have to be much closer to hit it. So just be aware of that. But that's all you do, and you just keep doing that. And you know, you twist your song, switch to the right instrument twist the next song, switch to the right instrument, make sure you don't get hit, and you just ease into it. And if you find yourself getting a little bit too close, like you get scared and you see them coming in, because it kind of has like a rubber band effect. Like if I move in like this and then I go straight, they'll still kind of catch up to me a little bit and hit me sometimes. So if you notice that happening, then just jump to get that little extra extra boost. Um, but if you just run straight like this, you know, they're not going to catch up to you. And especially if you do like the, the flicks, you know, if you really need to turn, just like jump and do a flick. Instead of, instead of, uh, moving the mouse like this because then they're really going to catch up to you. You only really want to move the mouse like that if you're uh, if you're twisting your dot. You just want to get get to that sweet spot, you know. Twist your second one. That's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Peace.